whoa, 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 this is personal business. But then again, maybe you should see these numbers. I'm not proud, but these also haven't stopped me. So stay with me. I want to tell you why it shouldn't stop you either. Before I get into the details, if you don't know me yet, I'm Liberty. And together with my sidekick, Justice, we are studying to make one med school mom. Let's get back to it. You've already seen my stats. I don't know that anyone would call me a good medical school applicant. In my defense, I have a laundry list of excuses. They're not excuses. They are not excuses. They're explanations for my low scores. How I actually started school when I was 16 but didn't really appreciate the value of my education. Or how I'm basically a career changer who started out in accounting. Or that I delivered my daughter as a single mom in the middle of one of my last semesters and then showed up on campus for a proctored exam that same weekend. Or how about my MCAT testing experience that was completely botched? Botched. That's a pretty good story. Do any of these sound familiar? Hit that like button and let me know. So how else can you shine on med school applications? AMCAS and ACOMAS primary applications basically evaluate the same attributes. You've got research experience, volunteer service, physician shadowing, leadership projects. So work really hard to tick all of those boxes and then realize that it's just a crapshoot. I said it, I said it. It's anyone's guess. There is no such thing as a perfect applicant for medical school. Long before you ever even appear in front of an admission committee, you've been defined by a piece of paper. It's probably more like a stack of papers, but in actuality, it's all on a computer. Anyways, you could have a 4.0, 520 plus MCAT, thousands of hours spent shadowing, volunteering, doing research, and you'd be turned down for lacking life experience or never having had the opportunity to exhibit resilience. Or you could have that 3.3 GPA, 500 MCAT, and more realistic extracurriculars that students who have lives or other responsibilities can attain. But then you'd be turned down because the school is afraid that you can't hack the strain of a medical curriculum. Where there's a will, there's a way. You have a few options. Let's say one, for the current cycle, you could play the numbers. During my first application cycle, I came across a blog post where someone wrote about having subpar stats and that he applied to an astronomical number of schools, just hoping that any one of them would give him a chance. And it worked. He's a med student somewhere now. I was inspired, right? So I tried this. I applied to, are you ready? 54 US medical programs. Four. And I think I got a secondary application to every single one, which means I had like an entire full-time job just writing essays. And for all my hard work, I got zero interview invites. What I did get was debt and anxiety. Don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Two, you could try to retake courses to improve your GPA. But this really isn't recommended since both AMCAS and ACOMAS now count your original, which if you've ever wondered, could be why your application GPAs are lower than the ones on your transcript. This just isn't going to give you the bang for buck that you probably want. Three, you might work on beefing up your extracurriculars and then put yourself through another <laughs> crap shoot where you're throwing away money and precious time to make your dreams come true. Four, there is a secret back door into medical schools. Okay, it's more of a back door that throws you into an obstacle course with a gatekeeper at the finish line, but so much better defined and way less abstract than spending another year crossing your fingers, hoping that a school will fall in love with you. You, a stranger, out of thousands of applicants. Many medical schools now have these back doors. However, they aren't super well known, so unless you know someone who's been through one, 
it's kind of hard to get reliable information about them. They're called Special Master's Programs, SMPs. Most of them are one year long, some are two. This is the same amount of time that you would spend on another gamble just reapplying. And after these programs, you matriculate into the medical school. No gap year, no application cycle, just straight in with no extra time lost. Each program varies, but many provide either guaranteed offers of admission or guaranteed interviews to their medical programs for students who meet GPA benchmarks during the first semester. This gives you a target, so shoot that shot. Instead of wondering if the admissions officer evaluating your application woke up on the right side of the bed before reviewing the paper version of you. An SMP gives you a clear course set by the medical school to show that you absolutely can hack it. A lot of these graduate programs are not only through the medical schools, but they're the same lecture materials provided by the same faculty that teach the med students. Added bonus, this means you get the opportunity to actually master the majority of first year curriculum, making your transition into med school so smooth. Did I mention you get to skip the application cycle? If you choose an SMP through your dream school, or maybe you end up falling in love with the school you randomly attend, they will usually evaluate their own SMP students automatically without an AMCAS or a Comus application. Once your first semester of grades come in, they will get you set up with that coveted med school interview, saving you hassle and dollars. But keep in mind, you are not obligated to the school through which you complete an SMP. They're just a fantastic way to boost your general application to any school by showing that you've been proactive toward making improvements and also that you can handle graduate level science coursework. AMCAS has a database of sorts that lists quite a number of these types of programs, and I'll throw that link down in the description for you. Another way I found some of these was actually by creating an account through PostBackCAS. This is the application service many of these programs use. Yes, they also require an application and interview process. I'll link this for you down below as well. The Student Doctor Network usually has threads with a list of SMPs, this can be a great place to get some information about programs, but take everything with a grain of salt. Remember that people typically take the time to review things when they're unhappy, not when everything is hunky-dory. Lastly, I would recommend just doing a Google search. Use the name of the school plus medical masters or biomedical sciences. Do some research and be sure to apply early since some programs take applications alongside the usual medical application cycle. Let's take a look at a wrap-up comparison. Depending on your unique situation, you may want to prep and retake the MCAT. If you're opting to try another application cycle, this is a pretty common way to try to improve your standing. If you're looking into an SMP, some incorporate MCAT prep programs right into their curriculum for you. Otherwise, the benefits that you get from completing an SMP probably outweigh the few brownie points you might get from taking the MCAT yourself. Racking up additional extracurricular hours is another way to try to improve your applications and may help you write more compelling essays. However, accumulating a significant number of research, volunteer, or shadowing hours over the short year between application cycles, while you're probably also doing other things to keep your world spinning, will be fairly difficult, maybe even completely unreasonable. Turning that coin over, SMPs, being part of medical schools, love philanthropy, but they totally understand that your focus should really be set on excelling academically. So it's reasonable, if not expected, that you won't have the free time to explore new experiences. Betting on another application cycle takes at least another year of your life without doing anything to start molding you into the doctor that you aspire to be. Whereas an SMP will expose you to the curriculum you will see and be tested on the next year. You know, next year, when you become an official medical student, you will learn how to study an immense volume of information that can often overwhelm first year med students, putting them in jeopardy of failing out. It does happen. Not to mention, I've heard countless medical students harp on how they could have aced some of their first year exams based solely on their notes from their SMP. This leg up is practically priceless. Lastly, let's come back to this whole crapshoot. There is 100% nothing you can do to ensure interviews or admission offers from just generally applying to schools. 
Let me say that again. No guarantees. The longer you're in the application game, the more you will realize how common it is for people to apply to medical schools three or more times before any appreciable movement. Who has that kind of time? Not you. The more time that passes, the longer you have been away from studying hard sciences, which means that you'll be increasingly behind if or once you do get into medical school. And that means that you'll be fighting an unnecessarily uphill battle. This is the real pearl of SMPs and why I call them the back door into medical schools. Get ready to read because all fine print is different, but each of these programs was built to get you into medical school. Whether they guarantee admission or just an interview, you know precisely what is expected of you to get there. No guessing games. Meet your benchmarks. Pass go to medical school. Listen, if this mom can do it, so can you. Let's get a conversation started. Leave me your questions, comments, tips, and stories below. Please help me grow by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to ring that bell for notifications and I'll see you in the next one. If you have ideas for future videos I can make from the perspective of a single parent on the road to a medical education, please be sure to let me know in the comments below.